Uh, okay, so you said earlier that from your analysis, there's not any racist history with Donald Trump. He's a New Yorker, he has New York values. Uh, in the press during the campaign, there were accusations that uh, he and his father were discriminating against black people in his uh, properties uh, when he was focused in the real estate market. Uh, do you want to address that claim? Sure. The discrimination laws in America since the 1960s um, have, can be interpreted in two ways and actually have two completely separate meanings. The first is what you would call discrimination in the old sense. Discrimination in the old sense is something like this. A white guy and a black guy apply for a job. The black guy is better qualified, the white guy gets the job. That is discrimination in the classic sense, right? In other words, you have the more qualified guy should get the job, the more qualified guy is African American, but the white guy gets the job even though he's less qualified. That's classic discrimination. If you actually look at housing discrimination suits, real estate lawsuits today, I would submit to you that out of 100 in the country, less than five are of that nature. Most of the discrimination suits in America today have to do with statistics. And statistics, is goes, the argument goes something like this. Um, at Walmart in Tulsa, Oklahoma, African Americans are 8% of the surrounding population, but they are only 4% of employees at Walmart. Therefore, Walmart is discriminating and the EEOC will file, uh, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission in conjunction with the Justice Department will file a lawsuit. Now I want to emphasize that this may be true or false, but it, it doesn't have anything to do with discrimination in the classic sense. What essentially is, there's an underlying assumption of proportional representation. And when that proportionality is violated, there's a presumption of discrimination and a burden on the part of the employer, or in this case, the contractor, to prove why there is a numerical discrepancy between the ambient population and your workforce. If you look at the Trump lawsuits to look at what is the basis of the proof that he discriminated, he had foreman that said, blacks don't need to apply over here. We're not hiring any blacks. First of all, try getting away with something like this in New York City. It would be the death knell of Trump's company to even move in this direction. Most large companies have been sued for discrimination. Virtually no company is, over the past 30 years, completely exempt. Almost all companies have adopted various affirmative action plans in settlement of these suits. Sometimes the suits are for the purpose of getting those plans into place. I only mention this to say, to me, this is not a closed issue. This is an issue that if you want to make a case, you have to go into the concreteness of the evidence. It's not enough to say, hey, the Justice Department filed a suit, therefore Trump is discriminating. That is only the beginning of the inquiry and not the end of it. So look into it some more. Can I ask another question? Sure, um, but just be brief. Yeah, um, there was another case where, he, the Trump wasn't involved, but it was the Central Park Five case where five black people were charged with rape after a series of trials, they were eventually acquitted, they found the actual rapist in the case. And uh, even after that acquittal and after they found the actual rapist, Trump continually said that those five black people did the crime, did, did the crime and should be in jail. Now to anyone who passes law, that would be erroneous. There's always a criminal who's been in jail for this. They didn't do the crime. Why are we dragging this case on? The explanation that anyone had in the media was that Trump is making a racist charge. Do you want to address that? I wish I knew more about it. If, if it is the case that Trump knowingly said that, he would be culpable for doing it. That would be no defense, no excuse for that. Um, Trump does shoot his mouth off. There's no question about it. He says things that he doesn't know much about. Uh, when he was first hit with these white supremacist groups, normally in politics, people have a certain degree of innate caution, which is the result of knowing that you're walking in a minefield, right? Now, if you bring in an outsider like Trump, it's gonna come with, with, with pluses and minuses. Remember, no outsider, and by outsider, I mean someone who's not a senator, not a governor, has, has been elected president since Eisenhower who was the supreme commander of World War II and very diplomatic. Um, with Trump, you're getting, in a way, an, an outsider who brings, in some ways, the refreshing candor 
openness and sort of outrageousness of it, but with some liabilities. And, and I think and the one question about Trump over in, in the presidency is what will he learn when he's on the job? Um, and we'll have to wait and see. But, uh, but again, I'm not, I, I don't know enough about that particular incident, so I can't address it specifically.